Atlanta. Explore, meet, create. We are uh, going to talk about the values of uh, and the ways that we can use actually Vincha uh, heritage as a tourism possibilities. So just a couple of words. Uh, about me. Uh, I have been working on the questions of European prehistory since 2006, uh, specialized in geophysical research and a lot of other things. And my uh, special skill is uh, sucking at designing the PowerPoint presentations. So consider yourself warned about this. Uh, so what is winter culture? This is one of the first things that we have to uh, take into account. Basically, it's an archaeological culture that covers all populations that share the same uh, material culture styles and everyday living customs that has been developing in Central Balkans and a good part of Central Europe. In the uh, younger Stone Ages, we call it or Neolithic, uh, basically between 5,300 and 4,600 BCE, which means that we are talking about cultures that developed in Balkans uh, before seven and a half thousand years ago, to put it even more in perspective, which is always hard to conceptualize for 1% uh, in this type of things is we are talking about two and a half years before uh, building out the Great Pyramids in Giza. So we have this, very interesting development happening in the Balkans and uh, Central Europe. And when you look at the map, you can see just how vast this uh, phenomenon is covering all major corridors of uh, Balkan Peninsula uh, or whatever you, we want to use as uh, the modern political uh, analogy for that because we have winter culture sites that are present in Hungary, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Romania, Bulgaria, Northern Macedonia, Greece and the center the most dense uh, population is present of course in today's Republic of Serbia where there are more than 600 of recognized sites where that number is actually increasing day by day with the new technologies being present. So a whole type of a, a civilization uh, springing out this, this uh, very early in prehistory in our neighborhoods. What makes it even more interesting, and this is something that is only recently uh, getting into the main uh, paradigm of the science is that the size of the sites is ranging between five and 100 hectares. So we are talking about proto towns already appearing there. And this is one of the most interesting part of the whole phenomena. So Vinja itself is located 15 kilometers southeast from the center of Belgrade. And it is uh, located on the very shore of the River Danube in a very picturesque location of one of the Belgrade suburbs. Uh, and Vinci is an eponymous site that gives the name of, for the entire Vinci culture, uh, which means it bears a lot of symbolical uh, load on it itself, which makes it one of the perfect case uh, studies to promote the entire uh, phenomenon. Uh, site itself for now has a limited uh, exhibition capacity with a small semi-permanent uh, sort of a visitor center and uh, exhibition center with a little bit of reconstructions. And it was first excavated in 1904 by one of the founders of archaeology in Serbia, Professor Milo Vasic. So why does it even matter, this sort of a winter culture? Well, for one, it is uh, the earliest confirmed extractive metallurgy of copper in the world. So it's a birthplace of metallurgy as we know so far. And uh, it is incredible to think about this sort of innovation happening in Balkans so early on. And uh, 
four more uh, metallurgy has been confirmed at most of the sites of the culture. To be honest, it was confirmed everywhere we looked. So it is now being uh, more and more present as something that is absolutely characteristic of the whole culture, experimenting, innovation, and creation. Also, long distance trade is starting to appear already in the Neolithic period of uh, Europe, where long distance trade networks with precious resources, such as obsidian or volcanic glass that comes from only two places in Europe. One is the Greek island of Melos, the other being a couple of uh, sources in Carpathian mountains. Uh, we are finding it everywhere in the, uh, on the area of Vincha culture. Uh, seashell, spondyl shell that is coming from Aegean Sea, uh, salt coming from long distances, and of course ores that are being experimented, which just shows how the formation of uh, the trade networks actually started much earlier than we thought of, which shows how Europe came into being as a continent with some of the Neolithic centers are now being confirmed that grew into the great centers of uh, history that we know later as the Minoan, Mycenaean and other civilizations. Their roots have been already established during the Neolithic period of prehistory. And one of the thing with Vincha, it actually is one of the earliest hub of activity, basically, uh, we like to pitch it in our marketing uh, scheme as the Frankfurt airport of the Neolithic Europe, where Vincha itself, the site lies on the banks of four major corridors, the Danube corridor connecting Central and Western Europe to Eastern Europe. Uh, we have a uh, Morava Vardar Valley connecting the South Europe and Central Europe, and the Tisa Valley connecting the Pannonian Basin and uh, Central Balkans together with Mava River that goes into the Eastern Serbia and toward Bulgaria. So we are already seeing this amazing connectivity happening in uh, Europe so far uh, in prehistory. And what is even more important, because one of the major uh, reasons why you, if you have, then that's great, but most of people haven't heard for Vincha or for the significance of Vincha because one of the things connected with prehistoric heritage, if it's not made of stone, it's not visible uh, in Europe because the preservation of the site is such that we have problems of how to uh, show it. And this is one of the things that modern technologies such as the geophysical uh, surveys have actually brought to light that we are dealing with much more complex uh, cultures that have been present in prehistory, as we can see from Uivar in Romania, where this is actually a smaller site, but from uh, cases like Stubline near uh, Belgrade as well, where these blobs that you see in the black and white image are actually houses, are aligned in rows. Uh, and the example of Oreshkovica that we have recorded in 2012 for the first time. Uh, we also see that there are fortifications that are organized around these settlements as well, uh, showing that there is a very, very complex form of organization, which also means that there is a dense population aggregation, multiple hundreds and thousands of people living in the same space, which we know from communication theory just brings this explosion of innovation, creation and communication, which is shown in absolutely stunning art of the Vincha culture that is best appreciated when seen live. It's very hard to convey actually the looks of it, but just looking and this incredible technological uh developments that are present and developed in this period uh, from stone making and stone technology to uh this incredible just is they should be functional but they are foremost aesthetical works of art and technology so why we interbello better the matters well as we said it's an eponymous site with uh 
giving the name and having symbolical values for the entire uh, culture. And it allows us to build identity for a wider audience of the whole culture and to bring this uh, somewhat complex concept into the wider paradigm and uh, the discourse of the public knowledge uh, dealing with the prehistoric cultures. Infrastructurally, it uh, has an easy access. Basically, you can get it, uh, get it by boat from the center of Belgrade. Uh, by public transportation, you need uh, about an hour. Uh, by car, by using E75, you are there in about 25 minutes from the city center. And also the uh, bypass, the new bypass that will be built in the uh, next two years a uh, new sector of the bypass that will be, uh, be built in next two years will pass right next to the site. So you will have a direct contact, reducing the time needed to get to it even more and actually making it more accessible, especially for people that even don't want to just uh, visit only Bel uh, don't want to stay in the uh, city center, but to just want to visit the site, they, that will be uh, ease of access. Uh, excellent positioning in heritage and natural resources. Uh, basically all, all the main museums considering the heritage are based in Belgrade center, but only 25 minutes from Belgrade city center. You have number of Danube Oxbows and Danube Shores that are in pristine condition, promoting the natural tourism as well, uh, which allows us to plan uh, ahead. So what are we doing for Vincha right now? First, the infrastructure that needs to be done. Uh, the site itself is the primary goal of our team. And uh, fundraising initiatives, of course, project writing, uh, planning, and uh, branding and positioning of the site in the public discourse, con uh, connected to long-term planning and building self-sustainable agents and practices with inclusion of local communities and uh, specialized communities uh, in creating this public discourse. Uh, creating networks for research, which is one of the most stable long-term trajectories where by connecting uh, this continuous research that has been started already in 1904 with 100 years of uh, research of the site allows us to plan and bring in more and more scientific and academic communities into the fold. So up so far, uh, we have gotten a AFCP uh, 2020 award, uh, which is the US Ambassador's Fund for Culture Heritage Protection, making Vinja one of the seven sites globally that has received that reward that is connected with sanation and uh, infrastructural works on the, this section itself and also even more important the capital investment project supported by the office of the prime minister of the republic of serbia which allows for this long-term planning and development that we are now engaged in so plans are the strategic planned approach to tourism development where we have to take into account both uh, the tourism requirements and how to best pre uh, present the site for the wider possible audiences the infrastructure creation for this uh, development, raising awareness, increased individual visits, but making sure that the heritage is protected. So following models from some of the most successful sites in the world, uh, everything is being done in order to uh, make the site as accessible as possible, but without overcrowding uh, the site itself. And of course, the interactive content creation, because one of the most problematic things in presenting the prehistoric cultures such as Vinja culture, although there is so much of uh, fascinating results that we see in only small glimpse in this presentation, one of the problems is it is all under the ground. So you have to bring that content out, which VR, AR, virtual reality, augmented reality is now allowing us to do with also connecting the ideas of the living museums and experimental archaeology, something that is actually acting as an attractor for general public. Uh, on the other hand, of course, we have professional congresses that uh, we'll be able to uh, hold on the site 
uh, just to mention a couple of uh, congresses uh, that are held semi-annually, uh, biannually, annually, and uh, every five years, uh, from which some uh, Belgrade was already uh, host of, EAA, ENA, Exarch, Mezzo, which brings up to three and a half thousand people per uh, conference, uh, but also content for team building and group visit offers such as exactly experimental archaeology, the hands-on approach where people can relive and uh, experience archaeology with their own hands and senses, not just listening to somebody explain like me for uh, now. Uh, festival activity ranging from uh, already some of the developed medieval festivals that are held in Serbia annually, but something that can be further developed, uh, especially with prehistoric approach, ecological themes, where preservation of old and uh, of ancient species and recreation of the ecotopes that were present in Neolithic is one of the goals of the site, uh, and artistry preservation of old crafts, Again, something that is connected with reliving the past personally. So thank you for your uh, attention and uh, I'm looking forward uh, to the questions. Well, Miroslav, it's an amazing project, but I have something in mind. You know, Your job looks like a little bit Indiana Joe Jones profession. Is this a myth or it's reality? What can you say about it? <laughs> well, it depends on where you are, first and foremost. <laughs> uh, if you're, uh, it's much more boring than Indiana Jones' profession. <laughs> so it's much more academic, uh, much less uh, chasing around. But you get to be a part of also some interesting projects, such as the projects on Bronze Age Siberia that we have been working on, then the academic turns actually to surviving. So it can be, it is a very dynamic profession, let me put it that way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what is the compromise between protecting cultural heritage and its commercialization? Because often locations uh, such as Wincha, we are using for special venues for events. What can you say about it? What is the right balance uh, between protection and, and commercialization? So uh, this is one of the very important uh, subjects because uh, the balance is uh, anywhere in between where the heritage is not in any way endangered or uh, just impacted in a negative way. Uh, and uh, basically the uh, ability to actually tend to uh, the visitors in an effective and interesting way, because uh, if you cannot tell your story effectively and cannot bring this sort of a discourse uh, to the widest public, then it's no use of just overcrowding the site, basically. So the exact number will be seen, but it has to be struck in this sort of way mm -hmm. to make the um, pleasurable experience for mm -hmm. everybody involved. Very good. And what are your practical experiences with, with some event or events um, organized in your, your pl place? Can you share some, some practical things? So some of the experiences that we have are from ranging uh, between, uh, like, for instance, the new uh, reconstruction of the Lepensky Vir uh, complex, uh, touristic complex and archaeological museum, mm -hmm. is that we are talking about uh, Easily, uh, there they have around 75,000 per year visit without any overcrowding or uh, this sort of an adverse effect. Mm -hmm. So if it's done uh, in an effective way, it can uh, reach significant numbers uh, with some events like the Night of Museums and uh, things like that, where we easily had with presentation connecting to archaeology, uh, over 5,000 people visiting in the span of a few hours. Super. And what is your message to all of us about COVID and pandemic? What can we learn from this situation? <laughs> well, do you want the scientific or the no, no, tourism? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Your personal. <laughs> Not scientific. So, we have to learn to uh, cope with even in this sort of a... Uh, just uh, this new reality, as they call it. And one of the uh, 
main advantages of archaeological sites and uh, heritage sites in general is that we are mostly talking about open air sites. So uh, even this sort of a uh, situation, sites like uh, Golubats Viminatium, seen a huge uprise in tourist uh, visits even during the pandemic because they are allowing for enjoyable uh, sort of a experience just uh, you know not thinking about the pandemic for at least a few hours getting to the site enjoying open air enjoying some content that is not uh that is also enlightening but not overbearing as well welcome to conventa explore meet create